Hello, and welcome to the Revenue Marketing Report powered by Caliber Mind. Our goal in the RMR is to elevate that operations position into a more critical, visible position in the organization. I'm your host, Kamala Thompson, and today I am thrilled to introduce Leah Andrew. Leah, please tell us more about yourself. So my name is Leah Andrew, and I am the Andrew half of Andrew Perry, which is a strategic marketing company. We work with mid-sized B2B organizations to help them with marketing strategy and implementation on a fractional basis. Fabulous. And a uh, fractional CMO, not necessarily a new thing, but the title's been evolving, how they function within an organization has maybe been a little bit evolving. I would love to know how you got introduced to the space. Sure. Um, you know, I've always had a passion for marketing. It's sort of been my career since I, for as long as I can remember. So it's always been for me about like helping really interesting organizations, organizations that I feel passionate about understand like the digital marketing world and how to put their best foot forward uh and for me so that means like, like marketing is about branding and strategy and all of those other things that get rolled into that i mean that i'm digressing a little bit on like that's not really how i got into fractional cmo but the big thing is i i started my career in fortune 500 and it just felt like it felt like a square peg in a round hole for me because I really couldn't always see the impact of the work that I was doing. And so when I started to shift to work with more small and mid-sized organizations, that's when I could you know, really see the impact of what I was doing. But as we know, these organizations don't always have huge marketing budgets to be able to spend on big campaigns and do all that sort of stuff. So it really was a natural, a natural evolution into that fractional world, right? Because with that fractional basis, you can sort of jump in, you can inject some adrenaline to the company, you can offer advice, you can be a sounding board, you know, you can even roll up your sleeves and provide some hands on support. So for me, yeah, it was it was a natural evolution, but stemming from like my my true love of marketing, I think. I love that. So let's dig a little more into the what and when perhaps of a fractional CMO would love to hear more details about what that function entails and why people may need to look at that as opposed to a full time CMO. Sure. So, you know, a fractional CMO is is just, you know, you think about the word fractional, right? It means part of or part of a whole. Um, so really a fractional CMO is, and you've probably heard it for others, like fractional HR manager, fractional CFO, all of these different kinds of people. There's fractional folks everywhere now, but really it's someone who you can hire on a fractional basis to help you in this case with your strategic marketing needs, right? And, and really I find that can play out in a few different scenarios. So you know, maybe your organization, you need help understanding strategic vision, but you don't have the budget to spend on a CMO who can like really help you put together a plan and a vision for what you want to do. So a fractional CMO can come in and, you know, help you understand lay of the land, who your competitors are, what your strengths are that you can leverage, who your customers are, and really sort of crystallize that for you a little bit. Um, another way that you can use fractional CMOs is if you've got, and I find a lot of organizations are like this, you've got some junior people, right, who are really good at execution and campaign and things like that but you may also be questioning how it all fits together or what it's all like leading up to and so a fractional cmo could come in and really be a mentor for those folks and again sort of pull together that overarching strategy so that you feel like those campaigns aren't just running siloed but that they're working towards something um and another one which i found in a few organizations we work with recently is sometimes you've got organizations who are very, very sales heavy, right? And they haven't always invested in the marketing piece. And now they're like, oh, I, we need to figure this out because we can't have our salespeople like doing all this work up front to try and like qualify and do all of those kinds of things for leads. And so, but if you're a sales based organization and, and folks internally don't always understand the value of marketing, mm -hmm. you really need somebody who can be in there who can sit at the leadership table and have those conversations at a leadership level to really educate internally about the role that marketing can play in an organization. That's such a B2B specific thing, really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm sitting here shaking my head, but uh, I think we've all seen it, um, especially with those larger ticket items, maybe still in the hardware, so if we're still selling hardware, which we are, um, see it a lot there too, where it's um, a lot of the effort is on the shoulders of the salesperson. Mm -hmm. 
but we're not really understanding that conversations go much more smoothly if the brand is established and your reputation is solid. I digress. <laughs> yeah, it's also just about touch points and stuff too, right? Like how, yeah. how many times does somebody need to see and hear about you in all these different ways so that it makes that salesperson's job that much that much easier, right? And and so I think once you start talking to folks about it, they're like, oh yeah, I get it. But if they mm -hmm. if they haven't thought that way before, there you can't underestimate the like the value of being able to have those internal conversations to just like normalize that, you know? Yeah. The organization. Yeah. It, well, hopefully, it's getting better as people realize they spend less and less time in brick and mortars. Yeah. And more time online, but yeah. Time will tell. Uh, <laughs> uh, you had so, a second question there, though. I don't think I answered it. It was right. I was just gonna yep <laughs> transition yep. into that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess the question that leaves is the when. When is the more idea? I mean, I could see this role playing a big part at several different points of time. But what? When are you most often involved with an organization? So you know, it's, it's, it's probably about the size of the organization more than anything. Right. And so are you uh, a mid-sized organization where you've got, as I mentioned before, you've got some of those junior resources, but you don't have a senior person. You're starting to see that it might actually make sense to have a more senior person, or you've got a VP sales, but maybe you can't afford to have both a VP sales and a CMO. So, but you know, it's important to have that voice at the table. You know, how do you, how do you bring those in in a way that can make sense for for your budget? Um, so really, it's a budget question and it's a company size question and it's probably a company stage question, right? Where are you at um, in the evolution of your company um, to say, do we feel like we have the budget to invest full time in a CMO or would we be better to invest our dollars somewhere else as we scale and as we grow? Um, that that might be helpful to you. A last thing I might say around when do you want a CMO is, again, what's happening in your industry, right? Mm -hmm. Is your industry going through change or disruption? And do you need some sort of new thinking or someone to like, you know, do a little bit of prodding or a little bit of questioning that maybe folks around the table won't do? So even if you maybe have folks in marketing in place, if there's somebody else who's got, you know, a senior leadership perspective, and I mean, we can digress into like the role that CMO plays and, and how it touches all the parts of a company and stuff like that. But to bring somebody in who who can just say, yeah, but why? Right. Mm -hmm. Or like, it really, like, do you do you really? And, you know, if you come in as a fractional CMO or a fractional anything, you don't you don't have those same worries, I think, about, um, you know, career limiting moves or, or different kinds of things about that, about asking the wrong questions, because when you're an outsider, you have this lovely freedom to be able to to ask some of those harder questions sometimes that mm -hmm. actually force people around the table to sort of say, right, right? Like you do that little pause and you're like, oh yeah, okay, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe we don't need to do that, right? It's just, you know, the fresh thinking, if new fresh, fresh set of eyes, all that sort of stuff, which I think is very valuable. I really like that angle. Uh, when you have a relationship established with somebody and you have a certain way of working together, challenging the status quo can be seen as a, a threat sometimes. And if you're new to the organization, it's, yeah, that is spot on. I, I really like that point. I think there's another thing too about when you bring in outside consultants, like it doesn't have to be a us versus them type of yep. scenario, right? It can be, it can be, it doesn't, it's not an either or, it can be a plus or an and, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you can bring in somebody who's got perspective across a few different industries, then they can sometimes see patterns or make connections, connect dots that, that you haven't been able to see because you're, you're really focused on your business, which, which is fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes that outside perspective can also bring that to bear as well. And I think mm -hmm. that's where, that's where, that's where change happens. Right. And that's where innovations, things and breakthroughs happen and all that sort of stuff where you can bring together those divergent viewpoints and things. So let's talk about the hard question. Speaking of hard questions, what is a sign that a company may have hired the CMO role a little too soon? So I've got, I've got two, I've got two answers for you on this one. Um, 
my 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 one opinion is that it's never too soon to mm -hmm. think about marketing, right? As soon as you've got a business idea, you got to be thinking about how you're going to market it, how Absolutely. you're going to sell it, what connections you're going to make, what you're going to do to get it out there and create the awareness that you need, right? So for me, it's maybe more of a question about what kind of marketing support do you need, right? So yes, do you need somebody that is fractional as we've been talking about, or are you funded and you're like charged with building a team and you got to build it up. So you need the CMO who can see the big picture and hire the entire department. Like that's, that's sort of my, my, probably my main answer, but my other thing would be, well, you know, it's likely too soon if you can't afford it, right? Like if your budget just doesn't make sense. Or the other thing I would say is, what, what do you really need done for the stage of business that you're at, right? Do you need someone who can think and put together like a big plan and strategy and, and like roadmap, blueprint, all that sort of stuff? Or, or do you need someone who's gonna roll up their sleeves and do it, right? Yeah. And so if you're more on the doing than thinking piece, to put it simply, then you probably have hired a CMO too soon, unless you found a CMO who's also willing to roll up their sleeves and dive in and do it, which maybe if you're in, you know, a bootstrapped organization, then that comes with the territory because when you're a startup, you don't, you, you do all the roles. Um, but that, you know, that would sort of be my, my answer to that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. It's did the budget disappear too quickly and can we not do all of the things we need to do because we pulled all of our money in, in one spot is probably how yeah. I would put it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's never too early to go fractional. For sure. No. Yeah. When is the wrong time to work with a fractional CMO, if there ever is one? So I think it comes back to sort of size and stage again. Um, you know, if you're a Fortune 500 company and you're or a large enterprise organization, you're running a lot of campaigns, you've got a lot of different things happening, you've got huge budgets that you're working with. I mean, you probably need a dedicated full time CMO resource, right? Like you need someone oh, yeah. who can be 100% focus on that business, thinking about it all the time, because fractional means fraction of time, fraction of brain. So it's, you know, when, when the fraction, when, for me, like when I'm on a client, I'm thinking about the client, but I maybe have three or four clients. So I'm dividing my time between those. So you're not necessarily getting, you know, a full week's work from me, but if I'm a full-time resource, then you are and, and more, but I do think, you know, there always is that opportunity as we went back to talking about, you know, the fresh thinking or the, or the, or the fresh perspective, there definitely can be a scenario where you would bring a fractional in for, you know, a strategic workshop to, or maybe to free up some bandwidth. We've oftentimes worked with larger organizations where you've got a CMO and they're really focused on something, but this initiative pops up and they need to get it done, but they don't necessarily have the resources in house. And so they need, you know, a senior resource who they can trust to get it done and to get it done quickly. Because oftentimes, you know, when you're outside, you can kind of come in and do that project on a four or six or eight week basis and sort of get in and get it done much faster than you could if you tried to then resource it internally. Okay, now I'm going to throw you a bit of a curveball, but I yeah. think it's something we're probably both very passionate about. So something I see a lot in B2B, we alluded to the misunderstanding of what marketing does, what all they touch and like what their influence is. I'd like to talk a little bit about credit seeking behavior. So we have a lot of organizations that are trying to divide credit for pipeline and bookings between marketing and sales. How do you view that mindset or how do you navigate that sort of mentality at an executive level? So are you are you saying this sort of us versus them where marketing wants the credit and sales doesn't want to share it or, or vice versa marketing thinks they should get the credit and sales doesn't think they deserve it and how do you navigate that yeah and a lot of it stems from how they're looking at the data and then not agreeing on what the data is saying so we can make it a reporting issue but really it's a it's an alignment them. issue absolutely yeah. like it's a it's i think you know when you talk about how to navigate it it all depends upon how is marketing and sale, how are marketing and sales viewed in the organization, right? Like, do do folks across leadership and particularly the senior leadership within sales and marketing view the other as a critical part of the funnel, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if if we think about our funnel, right, it starts with marketing and it goes down to sales. And so you need both those parts. But if you don't have alignment that 
those two need to play nice, basically, then you're you're not going to have that success. So how we navigate it is you have those conversations at the very outset and you agree together, right, on what those goals are, what the data is that we're going to look at, what the metrics are that we're going to hold ourselves accountable for. And and you make sure before you do anything else that that you've you've shocked it internally, you've sold it internally, you've got the right people on board, you've identified some of those champions that you think you can have on both the sales and marketing side so that you've had the conversations at the leadership level and you know that there's gonna be some support in at that operations level so that you can get those things done. But it, it's truly an alignment question. And it's not just like, yeah, we agree to work together, right? It's we agree to work together and we agree that these are the goals we're going to try and hit. And we agree that these are the feedback loops that we're going to do. We agree that this is how often we're going to give that feedback. And, and, and this is, you know, here's how we're going to make the systems talk to each other. And here are the data points that we're going to use and that everybody's looking at the same information so that it changes the conversation from, I feel right. I feel like this is happening to like, I know because the data tells me this and we're both looking at the same data. And so let's, let's have that conversation. Oh, I love that. That's, that's so well stated. Um, so the research proves, it sounds like such a simple thing, right? Talk to each other, agree on the key things and then do the key things on a regular yeah. basis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, however, only 10% of organizations and B2B report being aligned, which is just, mind-blowing to me because all the research shows that if you are aligned you're performing at a much better yeah. clip yeah do you think some of this is rolling down from the ceo as well hmm it just popped into my head i'm like is there favoritism is there a reason why we're leaning in wonder like are they tolerating a little bit of competition because maybe they think it's healthy potentially i mean you you could you could have that i think it's it's just that maybe they this is like such i'm so many hypotheses here but <laughs> if if everybody agrees it's important but there's only 10 percent that's happening in alignment even though we say we know the right things to do we must not know how to do those things correctly yet or we don't have the the commitment right like maybe there's something around short term versus long term and our attention spans and our willingness yes. to like pay attention and work because like these these aren't things like this is a change management process in a way right Absolutely. like when you have these things we are trying to change behaviors and we know that changing behaviors doesn't happen overnight so maybe there's a misunderstanding or a miss like people don't expect it to take as long as it should or to be as much work as, as it is right this isn't something that you just flick a switch and then it happens and oh hey we're all working together and aligned and perfect. Like these are things that have to happen on an ongoing basis. So you can't just have one meeting and then agree to it and then be done. You have to have that follow through on it and you have to have that commitment to follow through and to communicate um, on both sides. So maybe maybe that's the piece, right? I think we can all agree in theory that that alignment makes total sense and you know why aren't we all doing it? But when the push comes to shove on implementation, it's it's, it's the commitment and the follow through that maybe are just, we're not seeing. Yeah, I mean, it's been interesting to watch things evolve. I think people have kind of figured out that the wrong KPIs encourage the wrong behavior and more misalignment. They've put a lot of faith in revenue operations and aligning operations teams. I don't see that actually proving out in most cases if they have them um, reporting to a CRO uh, who comes from a sales background or maybe it's a marketing background. These are such different skill sets you need in each of those departments, sales and marketing, and they're naturally going to be focused on different things. Sales is incentivized to close this quarter. Mm -hmm. Marketing, we're incentivized to think long term because most of our efforts prove out long term. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just I don't that, know. I mean, that's so mess. Like, it's so hard, right? Like yeah. until until if, if until you can have those conversations. And I think it is it's about also having those those open and frank conversations, right, where we know there's the realities of the short term cycles and the need to close every month or every quarter. Yep. But we also recognize that sales like sometimes sales cycles and market cycles can be quite long. So mm -hmm. how do we how do we balance that out, really, I guess? Right. Because otherwise, you're always going to have one side feeling like it's not fair. Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. I think marketers, it's so important to know which tactics take how long to take effect so you're not starving your team inadvertently mm -hmm. and, and you're layering on different uh, methods. Uh, and then that comes just to understanding like, your customer journey, right? Mm -hmm. And who your who your customers are and how long different folks in different um, industries are taking, right? Like to, to do different kinds of things so that if you understand those, or at least you think you have a, a healthy understanding of it, like I'm not sure we ever truly understand uh, all of that, but then I think you, you can also figure out those pieces so that as you say you're not starving the customer right like or your sales team you've got your different pillars you've got your different journeys you know some close qu quicker than others so how can you it's it really does become a science right like how can you make sure that you're starting to have all of those streams running concurrently so that there's always like a constant drip through to sales oh fabulous well thank you so much for joining me and letting me take us a little bit off the agenda and rails a bit it was just something that has been top of mind lately. I'm sure not just for me, but for other people walk, watching the trends in the market. Uh, where can people find you online to network? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn for sure, uh, Leah Andrew, or you can check out www.andrewperry.com and that's my website and you will can connect with me on LinkedIn through that as well. Fabulous. And for those of you who enjoy the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. Tell two friends. It makes a difference. And for those of you looking for more great content like this, check out calibermind.com. <laughs>